Hi, welcome to the third episode of Just C++. Um, today it's about unique pointer pool, a pool which I wrote to cache certain objects within tasks which are running in the background analyzing images for the application which I started during C++ now. And so this class has the uh, unique ability to store an object in, in a unique pointer, but also hand it back to the caller as a unique pointer. And that's basically the, the trick I went for here, which is really special. Um, the class itself needs to store two objects which are quite large, which we're gonna see later. Um, and I just don't want to recreate those objects into my tasks which are running. I just want to load them into the task. I, I want to have like some pool which holds them globally and therefore I need mutatex, etc. So let's just have a look at the class. Um, first, I have the types um, for the face detector itself here, which is um, the deleter and the return unique pointer. So the ret this is a unique pointer which gets returned. It has a deleter, which is an SCD function, and the type which you know gets needs to be deleted and then we also define the type for the unique pointer itself which holds the allocation which will be the type which actually is private to this class and then we define a container for this type of thing so it's just a std vector um for the shape predictor, we do the same thing. And so implementation special for this class is um, that there are two I string streams. This is like kind of a specialty of um, dlib to load things from I string streams. So I have to load, um, I have to just keep two instances of these around to just to, to serve as a data source to, to instantiate objects from or to load objects from kind of. Um, we have a future which returns a string and loads a certain file which we're gonna just gonna see in a second. And yeah, we're gonna have here the container and the iterator to the container which acts as the uh, kind of, it, it tells us where the free store begins. And at the beginning, of course, we don't have a free store, though it's just and, and we create a new object if we don't have a, a free store. So that, that's the way the pool works. And of course, I also need some mutexes to protect um, the pool against access in the multi, uh, you know, concurrent access in a multi-threaded environment. And we have the uh, two member functions which call free on the object itself. And public, we get the get face detector, which just gets the face detector object and the, game sh uh, the, the shape predictor, the same thing. So let's quickly go into the implementation. Um, but at the beginning, when we create a pool object, I need to get the serialized frontal faces into the uh, I string stream, like we saw. And the same thing happens in the background via a call to SCD async, loading a buffer from a certain file. This file is 22 megabytes big. So I only want to load it once into a string and then reuse the string buffer kind of or the string as a buffer to, to load that object in, into memory from this file. Um, and a similar approach probably could be taken here for this, but um, dlib, dlib, um, chose to do this a bit different. So this is an innocent looking function call, but actually this is quite heavy. And then we have like a couple of thousand lines of um, just pumping data into S out. And once this is done, um, things are happening, just, you know, compress, decompressing, decoding and stuff like that. And then we return a string here too. And if you go 
go back. We see this is just getting into an I into a I string stream, which we use as a data uh, source to load the actual objects. Um, which happens then in the get face detector, um, which is called from a task running in a thread pool. Um, so we first have to make sure that the lock is set so that only uh, one thread can access this and that we have no concurrent access to this section. We define the deleter for the returning object, um, which then just calls free and this then we have to see if we have a currently a free object where we, where we could, you know, which can be used. If it's not the case, we create a new instance of our face detector and we get the instance of this and then we call deserialize with the object and the iString stream. And after that we have to call seek g to make uh, the string to, to reset kind of the to uh, the i the i i street well that string stream um well and we have to reset the free pointer to the new end because we just inserted something and we related the end iterator probably and rt ffd uh, is the type which we created for this is a unique pointer which has the pointer itself as an argument and the deleter into its construction and we're done. Um, but if we have an object which is already created and which is free for access, just can get the pointer, move free to the next object, and then we're done. Again, we create the new object, which is a unique pointer with a custom deleter, which calls our free function and the shape predictor, um, go to shape predictor, it's doing more or less something similar, um, just that I choose here to have the deleter do the actual deletion instead of calling the deleter. So this class still needs a bit of refactoring. Um, But if we scroll down into the actual free face detector implementation, um, you see here just again we lock the call find if on the whole range between the begin and the, 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 the section which is a free object because we don't have to look into there. Um, we compare them via the pointer, and if we find the object as a pointer, we have the correct object. And then uh, we need to check if, you know, this is, it, this is not the end which we got. So did we find actually something um, is free, not the beginning of detectors begin, so we actually we call this on an empty function. And then of course we have to check if currently we are not on the position which is like the new free, because free now needs to be set back by one. And if that's not the case, um, then we need to make an iter swap to, to make sure that the new object is uh, the new free object. It's not, you know, this we are free, freeing an object in this function, we're not creating one, um, is in the right position. And with that, we're done. And it works like a charm. And um, both of those objects are quite heavy to create. Um, I chose to load the. Uh, shape predictor asynchronously via uh, SCD async, which I think is like one of the few use cases where you really need this async. Um, and yeah, it works like a charm and loads all the uh, objects needed to detect faces in to my pool where which then is being called from a lot of tasks which are running in the Qthread pool. And it has some, you know, DLib specific uh, implementation things which you probably don't need if you if you don't use DLib. But on the other hand, this unique pointer trick uh, would work with a lot of other uh, objects which you would like to have in a pool too. Um, and yeah, as I said, a bit of refactoring maybe I'll do in, in some time here. 
Um, I, I also blocked about that, but then uh, there was only one object which was being in, only the frontal face detector object which was in the pool. Now it's two objects which I need in the, in the same uh, code, so I used this uh, for both. I think that's a good solution, and with that, we're through with the episode. Um, thank you very much for uh, watching. Um, soon the program of Meaning C++ 2017 will be available. We are currently in the voting and it looks very, very good and we will have a very cool product, uh, program. And with that, I also last weekend I was at the Italian C++ conference, also a very nice event. Thank you Marco for organizing that and thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.